We have been preparing for the storm, which is expected to hit us uh, in a window from tomorrow through Sunday. I mentioned earlier in some remarks that the overnight and into the morning storm that we just witnessed uh, came about uh, came about about as w it was what we expected. It was basically what we were expecting, and, and that was a good thing. Uh, I would just say this as you're thinking about your weekend, folks. Uh, if there is ever a weekend uh, to stay in and binge watch something, uh, this may be it, whether it's football, whatever it might be. Uh, so first point is that I am declaring a state of emergency for the entire state effective noon tomorrow. So a state of emergency effective noon tomorrow for the entire state. Secondly, we're also instituting a commercial travel restriction on roads north of Interstate 195, but not the New Jersey Turnpike. And that is also effective noon tomorrow? Yes, yeah. So we're instituting, again, a commercial travel restriction on roads north of Interstate 195, effective noon tomorrow, but not including the New Jersey Turnpike. So those are two uh, steps I want to make sure everybody hears and understands uh, both the Colonel and uh, Diane will get into a little bit more detail on what that means. This is a really challenging system, which is forecasted to dump, depending on where you are, four to eight inches of snow across Hunterdon, Warren, and Sussex counties, as well as parts of Morris and Somerset. Some part of the far northwest could receive up to a foot of snow. Other parts of central Jersey may see several inches of snow as well. Parts south of 195 may see more rain than snow, but that doesn't mean that there won't be challenges from the system. The bigger culprit for this storm, we believe, will be the potential for ice and freezing rain and the expected severe drop in temperatures on the back end as the system moves away late Sunday, which would freeze, therefore, any remaining precipitation, and it doesn't almost matter where you are in the state, at that point there will be remaining uh, precipitation, whether it had been snow, wintry mix, or rain. First and foremost, I would like to remind everyone of the importance of being personally prepared for a winter storm, of having a plan and an emergency preparedness kit, and to know where to get official information. All of this is available at ready.nj.gov ready.nj.gov. The Department of Transportation, bless you, is prepared to keep our state roads and highways clear and is ready to activate up to 2,500 pieces of equipment, plows, spreaders, and loaders as necessary. We are coordinating our storm preparation and response with regional transportation partners to ensure the safety of the tra traveling public. That includes other states, around us, that includes organizations like the Port Authority. DOT's crews were active throughout the night last night, and we all thank them, uh, and the county and local road crews, for their hard work to get our roads and highways cleaned and open this morning. And we thank them in advance of, for what will likely be a long weekend. Please do not go out onto the roads during the storm. We ask that you stay home that so, so that road crews whether state, county, or local, can do their jobs. And it's a blessing that it is a, we're having a conversation on Friday talking about Saturday and Sunday and a national holiday, a state holiday, importantly, on Monday. Colonel Callahan and the New Jersey State Police are preparing, and thank you for hosting us for this uh, uh, press event, are preparing the State Emergency Operations Center here for round-the-clock operations, <coughs> and that will activate tomorrow. This activation will pull together multiple state emergency management partners to ensure we are constantly monitoring and assessing critical situations from multiple angles. The Office of Emergency Management will also be providing updates on its Facebook page and on Twitter at ReadyNJ, at ReadyNJ. We will remain in close contact with county emergency management coordinators and will ensure on-site coordination with NJOEM regional representatives throughout the state. Because of the potential for ice, there is also the potential for blackouts, and Joe will speak to that in a minute. The Board of Public Utilities 
has been in contact with New Jersey's four electric supply companies to ensure they are prepared to deploy their crews into the storm to restore power safely when and where needed. If you do lose power, please call the blackout in to your electric company immediately. Do not assume your neighbors have done so. The more calls received, the better the power companies could focus their resources. Overall, we want all residents to be safe throughout this weather event. We urge you not to head out into the storm. And again, we urge you to visit ready.nj.gov for ways to make sure you're storm ready. If you have to go out, please take extreme caution and be careful of any trees or power lines that may have been weakened by snow or ice and which may not need much of an additional push to come down. And please, God, if you see a down line, we had a couple of storms last winter. I remember it uh, vividly and sadly where folks either drove a car over a drown, down line and lost their life or reached out and grabbed it. Please do not go near it. Again, report it to your local utility immediately. And overall, best piece of advice this weekend is to stay in. Our aim is to have New Jersey fully ready for the work week. That said, I'd like to ask Department of Transportation Commissioner Diane Gutierrez-Scacchetti to speak more and specifically to the DOT's efforts. Diane? Thank you, Governor. Come on down. Thank you. Uh, the New Jersey Department of Transportation has been coordinating closely with both the New Jersey Turnpike, the South Jersey Transportation Authority, and the Port Authority on our efforts to be prepared for the storm this weekend. Um, as the governor said, probably the worst aspect of this storm will be ice. Um, the snow will come, but then when the rain comes and those cold temperature comes, it's going to freeze quickly. And we just ask everyone to keep that in mind. Uh, we're preparing our equipment. We were busy the last 24 hours. We're replenishing our salt in our, in our, uh, our dump trucks. We're getting ready to go back out and be pre-positioned. As the governor said, we have more than enough assets uh, available to us to address the most impacted areas. We will also be in, uh, implementing our incline package. Um, we've learned it's important on I-280 and I-78 to make certain that we have a wrecker service available at the scene. So those, that will be uh, implemented tomorrow in anticipation of the weather and to make certain that we can quickly remove any overturned tractor trailers or other vehicles that may be in accidents to attempt to keep traffic moving. I just, I can't emphasize enough what the governor said. If you do not have to be out in the bad weather, don't be out in the bad weather. It's, it's just extraordinarily dangerous. It sounds like a good idea and you say, well, nobody else will be out, but unfortunately everybody else is thinking nobody else will be out. Um, and it just makes it a lot harder. Um, we will make certain that we are um, keeping a, a, a track to the forecast. We are, as the governor said, instituting a travel ban, a travel restriction. I knew that was gonna happen. A travel restriction that includes tractor trailers. It includes straight job empty trucks. It includes uh, car pulled uh, trailers. It includes recreational vehicles and motorcycles. So a car pulled trailer could be anything like anybody pulling any type of recreational vehicle, a U-Haul. Uh, I don't think you'll be pulling your boat, but that's what it would include. Um, anything attached to your car um, that makes you more than two axles. So please know that those will not be um, permitted north of 195 and on, no, that's statewide. Statewide. And on one night, the, the trailer ban is statewide. The um, north of one ninety five, north no, including one ninety five, and yes. including one ninety five. Yep. So this is obviously we're moving quickly. Uh, we're coordinating very closely with Pennsylvania. They've already put their declaration in for a state of emergency. They've already announced their trailer ban, and we're trying to coordinate so that we make sure everyone moving across is aware. Um, for the rest of DOT, we will have tree cutting equipment on our trucks. That means that as President Fiordaliso tells us there's an area where he needs to get electrical uh, services in, we'll be able to assist him immediately. Um, the most important thing I can say is please do not pass our equipment when we're working. And um, we talk about it all the time. I know you guys, you know, people uh, will pass a spreader. They'll get pelted with salt. That's 
one thing. But if there are plow teams out there, if you try to get in between them or go around them, it's very, very dangerous. They're riding in tandem for a reason, um, and the best you can do to stay back and let them do their job, just follow them. If you follow them, you're sure to get decent road, um, and that's the most important thing. Um, if, if I can emphasize again, football on Sunday, you know, lots of movies to watch, Netflix on Saturday, um, and Monday is a holiday. So do the best you can to stay home, uh, knowing that by Tuesday it'll be safe to be back out on the roads. Thank you, Diane. Um, all good advice. By the way, if you are pulling a boat, we need to see you for a different reason this weekend. Uh, uh, I want to ask um, the president of the Board of uh, public Utilities, Joe Fiordaliso, to come on up and talk a little bit more about the uh, preparations that uh, that he is overseeing with the four large uh, electric suppliers. Joe? Thank you. Thank you, Governor. And um, all of the utilities are making the necessary preparations. They have um, crews on alert, additional crews, not only their own crews, some out-of-state crews, and so on, and they will, could be here in a moment's notice. The biggest problem, as was indicated, is going to be the ice. And unfortunately, when you have ice, tree limbs come down, hit wires, and knock the wires down. If it develops the way it appears right now, it's going to take the utilities time to get out there to try to restore power if the roads are as icy as predicted. So we have to be a little patient as far as that's concerned. They will do the best they can. Um, they do not go up in bucket trucks if the winds exceed 40 miles an hour. And some of the predictions indicate that some of the wind gusts may be 40 plus miles an hour. But I'm happy to report that they all are in prep mode and uh, ready to go. So I'm confident that things will eventually uh, improve after the storm is over and uh, they'll be out there trying to restore power as quickly as possible. I think it's important uh, and I, I just want to emphasize uh, what Diane and the, and the governor mentioned. During those March nor'easters, a wire came down in front of my house, which burned through the asphalt. These are dangerous things. Please don't go near them. <clears throat> Call the utility if you're without power. Call the utility if a wire comes down. Call the utility to let them know what's going on in your particular part of the world. They are the experts. They know how to deal with these things. You and I do not. So be safe. Know that the utilities are prepared. We're ready to go at a moment's notice. And we will uh, have any updates that are necessary as we go along. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Um, deep, deep appreciation. You know, we had... We had a storm in November, which was a commuting nightmare, and lots of folks were frustrated, including yours truly and everybody up here, and uh, we, need to, we need to and we will do better. We have to do better. But we had some storms last winter uh, where the commuting experience ended up being manageable, but the power outages were, were in some cases, deep double-digit days. Um, you, you, you hate to have both of those hit at the same time, and that's through all these actions, we're trying to mitigate uh, e each of those uh, potential realities. Uh, my honor to uh, introduce our host uh, for this uh, discussion today, Superintendent Colonel Pat Callahan of the State Police. Thanks, Pat. Governor. Appreciate it. I'll just start. I'll, pr I'll probably re-echo uh, some remarks that were made here, but I'll start first off with the state of emergency declaration that will go into effect at noon tomorrow. Sometimes uh, I think the citizens hear state of emergency, and the next question that follows is what does that mean? Uh, it's our emergency management world that when a state of emergency is, is declared, that emergency protective measures become part of that state of emergency. And in this case, it is the commercial 
travel restrictions that Commissioner uh, Scacchetti Gutierrez or Whatever. the other way around, Diane, <laughs> Diane uh, <laughs> referred to. So I just wanted to clarify that, and we will have that also out there because sometimes that raises a lot of concerns with regard to what a motorist can or cannot do. Uh, from a preparedness standpoint, I could tell you that I was on the uh, conference call this afternoon with all 21 county emergency management coordinators, with our state emergency management partners, which included Department of Transportation, BPU, uh, NJ Transit, uh, DHS, uh, Department of Human Services is on the call because they oversee that emergency support function of mass care, uh, particularly with regard to warming centers. And if you couple power outages with the frigid temperatures, that becomes a dangerous comb combination uh, for most folks, especially the elderly. So uh, I would just stress to to this group, and certainly we have it messaged out that NJ211, 211 is where you, uh, the citizens can find that information as to which warming centers are open. I just went on it about a half an hour ago, and by county you can see where those warming centers are. If, if we're struggling to get power up and you need, uh, you need to get to a warm uh, location, uh, again, NJ211 is where that information is, and I, I do think that that's critical. And I will also stress uh, from my time as a young trooper on the road working blizzards, uh, there is inevitably a motorist that thinks that they can get around a snowplow train in that left unplowed lane. And I can tell you um, that is not a good idea. I would certainly hope and stress that let patience uh, rule the day over Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and I also think that Monday uh, we'll get there when we get there, but that flash freeze that is going to be a part of those frigid uh, wind chills, uh, maybe 15 below degrees on Monday, um, is going to cause us some concern too. So uh, as everybody up here has stated before me, if you don't have to go out, certainly don't go out. If you do have to go out, be safe, be patient, be prepared, make sure that you have an, enough of the um, necessary emergency equipment if you do get hung up on one of our interstates or, or highways or back roads that you're uh, certainly prepared to do that with a, a cell phone charger maybe a bottle of water a blanket and uh, again if you don't have to leave your house I would certainly recommend uh, that you don't the state emergency operations center will be activated starting at noon tomorrow and we will take that through the storm uh, and we will uh, double back on when we recommend to the governor when we should rescind that commercial travel restriction. Uh, and that will, uh, again, I don't want to guess on a time right now. Uh, I'll just let you know that it does go into effect at noon tomorrow. So I uh, appreciate your time. Thank you. Governor. Thank you, Pat. I wanted to ask maybe Diane just to come back up for 30 seconds. One topic um, I cut her off and neglected to that we neglected to speak to was NJ Transit. Would you mind giving us a word on that? Not at all. So it's the weekend, so you know we're all going to be on our weekend service schedule. Uh, there is a possibility with the ICE that we will have to suspend a northern bus service. Um, mm -hmm. They're doing the best they can to maintain the catenaries, but again, just like Joe's electrical wires, they're above ground, um, obviously subject to icing. So what I would suggest, and I think we've all said it, please follow all your social media outlets. The, the governor's office posts re repeatedly DOT posts, transit posts. We're all out there trying to get as much information to you as possible. So please make sure that, you know, we give people the opportunity to know what's happening. We rely on the media to get that message out. Following Twitter, following Facebook, you're going to find most of the information you need should you have to go out uh, over the next couple of days. Well said. So I would just conclude by, by sort of reminding us what we're sure of and what we're not sure of. We're not sure precisely how much rain versus wintry mix versus snow you're going to get depending on where you live. We've got a pretty good sense that the more north you are, particularly northwest, you're going to get a fair amount of snow. It'll be middling in central Jersey and less so in the south. Um, that's about the only imponderable, frankly. This storm's going to hit. There will be precipitation. And as Pat said, temperatures are going to drop precipitously. So if nothing else, even if we get the snow part of this wrong, we're going to have serious ice surface questions and issues uh, going not just tomorrow on Sunday, but into Monday. So everybody, please, please, no matter where you are, be careful. With that, any, anybody get any questions?
We've been brining since July, Brett. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll have Diane speak to the equipment. The roads had uh, pretty much uh, a lot of residual material on them from the last storm, so we only brined in areas where we felt that there wasn't sufficient material down. Um, but there will be no more. Once the temperatures get sufficiently cold, we won't be doing any more brining, but they will have been salting, so we're not. there will be plenty of material, de-icing material on the roads. How about equipment? Are you already out? Equipment's it's being reloaded. Um, it's a little early to pre-position them for tomorrow at noon, so right now what we're in the process of doing is making sure that they're fully loaded with salt, that the tree-cutting equipment is inside those trucks and available, um, and that they're ready to go uh, tomorrow morning. We'll deploy them if, if it's a noontime, 2 o'clock start. They'll start deploying early tomorrow morning. Yeah, so that's one thing that Diane just referenced. I don't think any of us spoke to this. Uh, declaring the state of emergency effective noon, it looks like the storm is going to start to hit us a, a couple hours after that. So that's deliberately to try to get that pegged to be a couple of hours in advance of that. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking off script here. If the storm accelerates, we may come back to you through social media and other means and let you know that we changed the start of the state of emergency. Please. I'll give you the general answer, and then Diane can give you the specifics. This is something, when you do something like this, you've got to coordinate it because you have unintended consequences. If your neighbor does and you don't, you've got a whole passel of traffic uh, of the sorts of vehicles that are the most dangerous at times like this. So the answer is it is highly coordinated. Diane can speak to specifics. So we are coordinating with the Port Authority. Um, we don't have yet c confirmation for what they'll do with travel restrictions. And I have a call in to Secretary Karras in New York. Um, we've started these calls, certainly as the governor referenced after November 15th. We all felt the, the, the sting of that storm. Um, and so now we're very, very careful amongst us to be in touch with each other. We're introducing our staffs and making sure that it's a tightly re coordinated regional response. Port Authority has pre-treated their bridges. Um, and so hopefully when we're done with this, we'll get touch base with them and get the rest of the information we need on what they're going to be doing with states of emergency and travel bans. And that'll go out on social media as well. Remind us again, Pennsylvania is effective when? 7 a.m. tomorrow morning is they call it a declaration of disaster. It's the equivalent of our state of emergency. Um, and their uh, travel restrictions will go into effect at noon tomorrow. And they have a noon end time as of now. Um, but again, I think, again, it's dynamic. It's as the storm happens, as the governor said, as things change, why it's very important to, um, to be on to social media because that's where this information will be being pushed out. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else? Sir. I got a personal story. I got a son uh, who's away at school and was coming back for a family uh, matter, and uh, we just moved him up to Saturday from Sunday. Uh, so, I, I'll, again, I'll give you a, a, just a common sense answer. The extent to which folks can anticipate this and get out in front of it, uh, the smarter they'll be. Because uh, there's going to be a period invariably in this somewhere from probably mid-afternoon Saturday until late afternoon Sunday, where it could be very difficult to get around, whether you're on a train, a car, a bus, a plane, whatever it might be. So trying to anticipate that and make your moves preemptively is probably a smart piece of advice. I want to thank hey, Colonel... Topic? What's that? Topic? If you have to. Well, I mean, today is the... I have nothing new on that front to offer, Brett. I mean, we've put a bunch of processes in place. One has come to fruition. Two are still ongoing. We respect the legislative process as long as it's not political, it's survivor-centric, and it's a whole-of-government approach. And beyond that, uh, I've got nothing else to add. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Most importantly, Colonel Callahan, to the brave men and women of the state police, thanks for hosting us. Be safe, everybody. Again, if you got a place to go, you want to figure out what's going on, ready.nj.gov. Be safe. If you can't, stay home. We'll be in touch. Thank you. Good job.
Thank you. 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 Thank